Johnson. Thanks for joining me on this ASMR video. As I continue with my album talk series. I thought I'd talk today about The Cure. A band I still enjoy listening to. a similar kind of scenario to the whole Blur Oasis thing. I'm not too sure if this was a real rivalry between the bands or just something manufactured by the music press. But either way, I was very much in the camp. was a bit of a Robert Smith look-alike back then, with ridiculously large back-combed hair, dark eyeliner, and a bit of red lippy on special occasions. Looking that way at 15 and 16 years old meant that I never had any real problems getting served in pubs and clubs, despite being an underager. Presumably, my ridiculous hair and makeup covered any youthful complexion I might have. Or maybe the bouncers and bar staff just felt sorry for the way I looked. For three years that I was obsessed with the band, I bought all of the albums released to that point. Unfortunately, in hindsight, this involved buying a lot of them on cassette. Since I haven't had a functioning cassette player in years, those albums are packed away in a box somewhere. However, I did buy three of their albums on vinyl, so I thought I'd talk about them together in this video. Those albums are Boys Don't Cry from 19 79 The Head on the Door from 1985 and Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me from 1987 The Cure are an English rock band
stitched together with Robert Smith's look had a strong influence on the emergence of Gothic rock as a subculture that formed around the genre. After the release of their album Pornography in 1982, Smith like these certainly aided the band's commercial appeal and longevity, allowing them to release 13 studio albums to date, along with several EPs and over 30 singles. The Cure were also inducted is a compilation and re-jumbling of the band's debut album, Three Imaginary Boys, from the same year. Apparently, Robert Smith had been unhappy with the original album because decisions about track listing and artwork were made by the label and producer without his consent. For all subsequent albums, Smith made sure that he had absolute control over all creative decisions. Back then, in the late 70s, The Cure were a three-piece, with Robert Smith on guitar and vocal. Michael Dempsey on bass and vocals, and Lawrence Tallhurst on drums. Whilst I like some of the songs on this album, and I was intrigued by the group's dark trilogy of albums that followed in the early 80s, 17 seconds. was really the dark melodic sound of their music from the mid to late 80s that hooked me. The three albums from that period were The Head on the Door, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, and Disintegration. I have the first two here on vinyl. Disintegration, my favourite of the three, is on cassette in a box, so I just listen to it as a digital download these days whenever I feel the urge. These three albums, and The Cure more generally, remind me fondly of high school and of the girl really into at the time. She was more of a fan of the Smiths, so there was a nice wee tension there for us to flirt under the guise of arguing about music. Later, when we broke up, I remember listening endlessly to Disintegration following in the glorious self-pity of unrequited love, thinking about it, the cure 
music for wallowing and self-pity, especially when in a darkened room.
side three. Just like heaven, all I want. Hot, hot, hot. One more time. Like cockatoos. And on side four. Icing sugar. The perfect girl. A thousand hours. Shiver and shake. Fight. I think my favourite songs on this album are probably Catch, Just Like Heaven, One More Time, and A Thousand Hours. But all four sides are really good. for watching this album talk video about the cure and for making it to the end. If you haven't already, then please subscribe.